hey everyone welcome back to my channel so this video was based on a specific request and in this video guys i'm gonna make edema very simple for you i'm gonna explain this page first aid will come naturally and you will find yourself memorizing the equation naturally hopefully so i want you guys to understand that normally fluid should be kept inside blood vessels so in such a case we are normal and we do not have edema edema happens if this fluid cannot be kept inside blood vessels and so it accumulates in tissues or in the interstitium now therefore we need to understand what are the forces that keep the fluid inside blood vessels and if those forces are imbalanced then we get edema or fluid accumulating outside blood vessels. So I like to have this analogy of forces, the stalling forces as push and pull. There is a force that pushes fluid outside, which is the hydrostatic pressure. This is a pushing force. The greater the water, as you can see, the greater the depth of the water, the higher the pressure. And there's another force which is a pulling force called oncotic pressure denoted by this sign pi oncotic pressure means the more osmoles or essentially the more substance there is on one side of the container the more it will draw water or pull water from the other side and we know this to be the proteins albumin in vessels right so the pushing force is p hydrostatic pressure and the pulling force is oncotic pressure under normal conditions pushing forces equals pulling forces so no edema happens and fluid is kept inside blood vessels so capillary hydrostatic pressure allows filtration pushing fluid outside and it returns by the pulling force oncotic pressure and no edema happens now let me continue the rest of the starling forces because it's not just limited to this we are going to make the equation together so i'm going to denote capillary forces by c so the pushing hydrostatic pressure of the capillary that pushes fluid outside is pc and the pulling force that returns fluid back because there is a lot of oncotic pressure there's a lot of osmoles or colloid or let's say albumin is the pulling force that returns fluid back so c here stands for capillary and p for hydrostatic pressure the pi sign for oncotic pressure now just as there are pushing and pulling forces in the capillary there is also those in the interstitial fluid denoted by i so there is also a pushing hydrostatic pressure of interstitial fluid that pushes fluid to the capillary denoted pi and there is a pulling force as well the interstitial fluid has osmoles as well it has an oncotic pressure that pulls fluid outside and that's denoted by this sign so those are the major starling forces and you notice guys that i color coded them that the um, pink arrows return fluid back and the blue arrows bring fluid outside i'm going to create the equation with you guys in a very simple way but there is something else fluid doesn't just go come in and out like that as if it's an open container we know that capillaries have fenestrae or pores they have permeability to fluid and they have permeability to proteins not everything just comes in and out like that right so the permeability of capillaries to fluid is denoted by kf f for fluid and its permeability to proteins which should not come out proteins should stay inside and pull the fluid it's denoted by this sign 
So let's guys make the equation together and I've already agreed to you guys about this color coding. So we gathered the two forces that bring fluid back into the blood vessel together, the oncotic pressure of the capillary and the hydrostatic pressure of the interstitial fluid. Go follow the arrows, follow the pink arrows. You're going to notice that both of these forces keep fluid inside. Therefore, they are anti-edema. So if edema shall happen, those forces will decrease, right? On the other hand, if you follow the blue arrows, you're going to notice that these push fluid outside. So the hydrostatic pressure of the capillary and the oncotic pressure of the interstitial fluid move fluid outside. Therefore, they are pro-edema. So let's think about conditions that might increase these forces and therefore lead to edema. For example, what might increase the capillary hydrostatic pressure? Heart failure, for instance. Now, when you have accumulation, like you have uh, with heart failure, there is activation of the renin-angiotensin system. You have a lot of aldosterone and retention of fluid inside the body. And we have agreed that the more the fluid, the more the capillary hydrostatic pressure and the more the pushing force outside the vessel. Now, how can we possibly increase the uh, interstitial fluid oncotic pressure and also lead to edema? Let's think of lymphatic obstruction. When lymphatics are obstructed, not all the proteins and osmoles that have come out, let's say antibodies for instance, are absorbed. And so a lot of them remains in the interstitial fluid remains behind. And when you have a lot of protein behind, it's a pulling force. It's gonna pull fluid outside the vessel. So this is another example of something that can lead to edema. What else did you guys forget when we talked about capillary permeability to fluid, KF? Now, trauma or toxins or inflammation can increase capillary permeability and fluid will come outside just because the pores have become wider. So these three forces, guys, if you increase them, you are creating edema. All these three forces are pro-edema. On the other hand, if I decrease the anti-edema forces, that leads to edema as well. So let's think about, for example, capillary oncotic pressure. What keeps fluid inside by pulling forth the major proteins, the albumin, the major contributor to oncotic pressure. So if albumin goes down because of liver disease or nephrotic syndrome, that means we do not have enough anti-edema force. We do not have enough oncotic pressure to pull fluid back and that can lead to ascites. Now, if you remember, guys, the permeability of capillaries to protein is denoted by this sign. So if we shall maintain, um, if we shall maintain oncotic pressure, no proteins should escape. No proteins should come outside the vessel. We need to keep the proteins inside. So we need to have very low permeability to proteins in order to pull the fluid in, right? We need the proteins to stay in the vessel to create an oncotic pressure and act as a pulling force. So actually, in best case scenario is that this permeability, this number should be low. Now let's guys create together the equation. So far, we've seen that those two forces, those two hydrostatic pressures are opposite to each other and those two oncotic pressures are also opposite to each other. So if we shall make an equation, we're going to subtract this. We're going to do PC minus PI. We're going to do pi C minus PI because these are opposites. This is anti-edema. This is pro-edema. This pushes outside. This pushes inside. Also, this is anti-edema, it pulls inside, and this is pro-edema, it pulls outside. And here, guys, we have just created the equation together. 
if you take a look at the equation here k stands for capillary permeability to fluid so we're going to multiply it by the bracket of fluid which is the p hydrostatic pressure allows fluid on the other hand oncotic pressure uh, is related to protein so we can associate it with permeability to protein now we subtracted the two opposites from each other we know that pc is opposite to pi so we subtracted pi c is opposite pi i so we subtracted and we multiplied by the permeability of each so this is permeability to protein this is permeability to fluid so if you take a look at this we have actually subtracted the anti-edema from the pro-edema because once i do pc minus pi pc is the positive one right so as if you should ignore this and once i subtracted uh, pi i from pi c that means pi c is the positive which means that it's as if i'm saying that this part is pro edema and this part is anti edema so if this part which is pro edema increases goes above the part that's anti-edema cap uh, fluid will flow out of capillaries and lead to edema however if this part which is anti-edema is more than this part which is pro edema fluid will come back if they are equal to each other nothing happens no fluid moves so this is essentially the whole thing and I've just explained to you guys this whole page, capillary fluid exchange, and we've seen how conditions that increase capillary pressure like heart failure, conditions that increase the KF, capillary permeability, like toxins, infections, and burns. We've seen what increases interstitial fluid oncotic pressure, which would um, draw fluid outside the capillary like lymphatic blockage and those that decrease capillary oncotic pressure by decreasing plasma proteins as in nephrotic syndrome liver failure etc so if you just consider this bracket as the pro edema bracket this bracket is the anti edema bracket anything that increases this more than that leads to edema and vice versa and i want you guys to like remember some math remember some i don't know algebra in that if i already subtracted the pi from the pc then if this goes up then if the pc goes up the whole bracket goes up right because this is the positive one this is the negative the same goes here if pi c this one goes up that means the whole bracket goes up because this is the positive this is the negative I hope, I hope it makes sense, guys. Let me know what you think in the comments. All the best.